Make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring that notification bell, and make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. Horror games have a very interesting balance that they need to hit. They need to both scare the player, but give them a means to actually navigate the game world. They can't just say, have you go through the level without a weapon, right? And yet that is absolutely what a lot of games have been having us do. And if I've got a big eight foot tall monstrosity running right at me, I want a weapon. And I'm going to use that weapon to then fight back. Might lose, probably will lose, but at least I have a fighting chance. And yet, we see that mechanic thrown on its head for the sake of being scary. So this is our conversation on haunted house games or weaponless horror games. Don't you feel like horror games lately are kind of like Oprah? You get a weapon, you get a weapon, you get a weapon. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you, you could argue that. I mean, you know, a lot of horror games definitely do uh, give you quite the arsenal um, to go through them. You know, you're supposed to be scared of me. You're sitting there rocking around with a flamethrower. It's just like, there's a disconnect here. There's a disconnect here. <laughs> it's just like, all right, then. And there was actually a design article back from um, Glenn Schofield. Schofield? Anyway. Um, the lead designer of the first Dead Space. Okay. And he said, we want... I Isaac... need to go through Dead Space. You need to take me through Dead Space. Yeah. One of these um, days. I want Isaac to feel vulnerable. If you go through, like, the Master Chief, you're not going to be scared because you're the Chief. Yeah. And... Um, you know, that guy doesn't fear anything, so why should you? Yeah. And so we want Isaac to be more vulnerable, and so that's why Isaac moves slow. Isaac is kind of unwieldy to use, and all of his weapons are kind of these repurposed mining tools. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm not going to lie. The first time going through, it is one of the most frightening games out there. You're not you play it in the dark with the lights off, or you get halfway through oh. and you just kind of turn out. I, I need to go through them. You need to take me through them. Um, hide the kids. They are very much oh, okay. an M. Very much an M. Okay. We can put them um, up here, though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very, but they're very much on the uh, deserving of the M rating. And so, um, but no, it's it's very interesting because in kind of counterpoint to the, especially when you started to see Resident Evil turn into full-on action movies, as right. action games instead of um, horror games, you know, you had weapons in the early Resident Evils, but they were limited, and ammo was incredibly scarce. And so, uh, Resi 7, I remember watching a couple of playthroughs. Uh, that's closer to the and, original and style. even watching a couple of playthroughs, I was just like, holy, like, cause, you know, it's dark, it's nighttime, I'm just watching stuff. Gah! Yeah. And even I was tense but just watching know, and, other and people play is, the game. Is, and, and so that actually ties into what kind of bugs me, is that when you saw a lot of the AAAs move away from horror, saying it was dead, um... You saw a lot of indies kind of start to step up, but indies obviously reduce budget, yeah, reduce yeah, yeah, yeah. staff. And so, you and know, this is not a comment on indies at all. This no, is just no, what it's they just had to work with. with. And so, the most uh, popular of the indie horror games to come out of that was uh, Amnesia the Dark Descent. And that okay. started a trend. Not heard about that one. Yeah, I'm it's kind of gone by the wayside. Gamer. It's, uh, it's kind of gone by the wayside, but it is kind of the progenitor of what I call the haunted house game, where you are just there on. To observe, right? Right. And so, you know, in Amnesia, you had to go through you, and your only manageable resource yeah. was light. Your lantern. You had to get oil for your lantern. Okay. Which is turned into batteries for your flashlight or batteries for your camcorder sense. Right. Fuel for your light source. Okay. But then the big, horrible monster comes at you, and you can run, hide, or die. Yeah, I've seen a fair few... Uh, indie games come out the mo one of the most popular being FNAF but that's but, but yeah. FNAF when you initially hear about FNAF it's it, right yeah, yeah. Foxy <laughs> Foxy I love I, I I've, I've not played the games but I love watching the lore they See, I think that the, annoy me that, they no I, I, this is the yeah. lore is Confusing. but anyway but that, 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 this will turn into a FNAF video but but it's but, uh but no it's actually FNAF is one of the games that really annoyed me well, Matt, you were just scared. No, I wasn't. Because here's what FNAF is. Sit in the room. Yeah? Push buttons. Do it 100% correct, or we're going to jump scare you. Well, now that I know it's going to... <laughs> All right. All right. Try again. And, you know, by the time you get on, like, night five and whatnot, you have to be so precise. 
it's not a horror game. It's a resource management game. And when you fail, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, you jump out of your seat the first couple times, but by the time you're on death 20, they're not scary anymore. They're annoying. Yeah. And so, yeah. <clears throat> no, and <clears throat> I, so, so what, so, <laughs> So what other games are you talking about? What, what what's, this, I mean, what's I, I, the mechanical thing that you're talking about here? Because this, is, Outlast this or, is your because yeah. this is your baby on this one. Yeah, no, Amnesia and Outlast are kind of the two that really are the biggest front runners, and there are others out there, uh, Layers of Fear and a few others. Um, ah, I've heard of Layers of Fear, but they all have this haunted house mechanic where you are just there to walk through, mm -hmm. and if anything scary chases you, you let it. it. It chases you. You either hide somewhere or you die. If you can outrun it and kind of skirt around it. And here's the other thing, is that it also turns them into stealth games. So your argument is that horror games without weapons aren't horror games. They, after a minute, turn into something else. They, All don't, right. they don't turn into horror games. They're All not right, horror so you're, games anymore. You're in a pitch black room. You have to turn two valves and there's a horrible boogeyman in the next one. Okay? Yes. Second you turn on the first valve, he's going to find you. Guaranteed. He will just be right there outrun him. All right. Well, if you don't get the puzzle exactly correct, you're going to be there for a minute. How is that scary? That's not scary. That's frustrating. And so you sit there and it turns into the stealth puzzle game where, or just basically a stealth game because there's not much puzzle. Well, I mean, so we, we... And you're just the little rat in the maze trying to run around and you can't fight back. Whereas, and so you're sitting there and you're just dying on repeat, dying well, I mean, on repeat, dying on repeat. Bendy and the Ink Machine. We have Bendy and the Ink Machine here. But you know, let me my finish wife, my, let me finish my thought here before we go. Yeah. Contrast that with Dead Space, right? Where it'll be the same setup. You have to go and you have to hit this valve to unlock this door to progress, fix this part of the ship. Yes. Well, the difference is, is that when you turn on the valve and all the horrible monsters start spawning, you jump out of your seat, you're shooting wildly, and you by the skin of the teeth, the skin of your teeth, you make it through. You no longer have to play that part anymore. So the horror is still fresh in your head. You are still on that adrenaline rush. You're no longer stuck there, and maybe I just suck at stealth games, and that's my whole thing. But it's just... Um, I'm also not the good at stealth games. And it's, uh, you should see my scores on Metal Gear. It's awful. Because uh, <laughs> they rate you. I was, how, how I was wanting to get into Splinter Cell, and yeah. then I realized that I am just not... And but I'm just not good at games. Yeah, and, well, it's just like, okay... Maybe that's why I got into gaming. It had nothing to do with <laughs> my just philosophical. I just sucked so bad at them at one point. I was just but like... No, Metal Gear, I'll get a CB rating because it'll be... All right, I'm being creeping up and creeping up. Knockout, knockout, creep through. Hey! Oh, M16. Hey. M16. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> or I restart. And it's just... And so that restart, it robs the tension of the narrative. There is no longer this horrific thing chasing you. It's an obstacle. It turns from a horrible nightmare into a game mechanic and um this run hide and the problem is that they don't properly contextualize it either half the time um you don't know what the heck is chasing you in amnesia it's some sort of monstrosity in uh outlast it's um experimented on mental patients oh well, and um well that's just creepy hearing about it <laughs> it's, no it's creepy but it's not horror right and so <sighs> Honestly, okay, so that, so then so then what makes a horror game a horror game? It's that continuous pace of, you know, you think about you know how a good horror movie structures itself, right? Creeping dread. Wait, there are good horror movies. Yes, <laughs> there are. You see what I mean, though. Yeah. When was the last time a good horror movie came out? Because you and my wife, you guys love the horror movies, and I watched. Lights Out you. was pretty good. That was like 2011, 2013, something like that. Okay, so yeah. seven years ago. Um. First Conjuring was pretty good. Uh, it was okay. The Exorcist. That was like 70 well, Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They still yeah. make the good horror movies now? Yeah, right. But anyway, but no, what a good horror movie will do is it'll go through pacing. Uh, did you ever see The Descent? No. Okay. Um, here's the setup, right? I'm terrible at being a nerd. I am terrible So the setup for The Descent is a bunch of women want to go off, um, and they drag along their um, the main character, your protagonist, a horrible auto accident. She lost her family. Okay. So she's grieving. Her friends want to take her on this trip to kind of get her out of her shell. Okay? Okay. And they're going to go caving somewhere in the boonies. I might be Europe. I don't know. And, you know, so the setup is that they go off grid. They don't go through the proper caves. They go off where people aren't going to be able to find them should anything go wrong. Right. Because it's new. We're discovering. Oh. And then, of course, there's a cave in. Now you're trying. No, okay, so here's why that's not believable. Here's why that's not believable. That's a guy thing. Guys do that thing. Moving on. 
But um, oh, oh I just said a flame war on the internet. If yeah, yeah, it. you did. Cause I've also met a few. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, dude, I wouldn't go caving. You've done the caving thing. I've done the caving that. thing, and I, I don't get claustrophobic easy. But that probably played on the fear too, because the cave in happens. They're trapped. They're isolated. And this is already a very tense, scary situation. Yes, you are. However many miles underground without, and that's when the reveal hits. Oh, we're not where I told you we were. We're actually over here, and they're not going to look for us there. Oh. And so you are royally screwed. And then they reveal the monsters. And, ah. And so you are in, but it's build up. It's build up. And you have to have these periods of, you know, intense, you know, it's, it's release, right? You know, think about a rubber band. If you just stretch it too much, it'll just snap and people get bored. There's no payoff. But if you constantly stretch, release, stretch, release, you leave the audience on the edge of their seat because they're just like, you never give them. Okay, so. Uh, and so, but the problem with these weaponless horror games is that they just snap you back into these. There's never that release. You're just always the rabbit, right? Well, they just get a new rubber band. And they, you just sit there. And if you suck at stealth games like I do, now you're just stuck on the same level on repeat. Go ask any gamer how much they like getting stuck. And uh, I, I've, I've been there. I've been there. I have since I've be- known you. I have started playing more games, and I start to realize now that. And I- it just drives me up the wall. And maybe I'm just not the market for these. But I also don't find them scary. I find them frustrating, because you don't ever give a payoff. When Dead Space gave you a payoff, you got to have that bit of catharsis, and then things would quiet down, and you knew, okay, I can breathe. I can breathe. You move into the next part of the ship, and they start ratcheting up the dread again. You know what I mean? The first time you hear the uh, the these ungodly howls of one of the mini boss enemies is just nightmarish. Okay. You don't want to walk down that hallway. You know you have your gun. You know you can probably kill it. You still don't want to do it. Okay, so I mean, at this point, it doesn't even sound like you're arguing with the mechanic of being able to 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 to, to shoot I'm, the damn thing. But it's this. But it's this idea. Well, no, I guess you are. I guess you are because. Because it sounds like to me again, be just I'm I'm so far removed from this because yeah, yeah. again I had this epiphany when I was sixteen. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. But I had the epiphany of a sixteen year old, seventeen year old. Yeah, yeah. That I'm not gonna play video games anymore. And so, but it, it sounds like to me is that by just never giving the protagonist your character the ability to fight and protect themselves or even go after this thing. That robs the character of, of of that rubber band tension. And you don't and have thusly- any agency in the world. Like, I mean, let's take Outlast, for example. You're trapped in this horrible, insane asylum with all these... Wait, this- what, what movie? What you- Out- Outlast the game. Outlast uh, the game, sorry. This is the one with the mental asylum. Okay, Outlast the game. You just said that really fast. Sorry, I'm talking because you know, I know. And, but, the you clock know, is important, people. But, you know, what I'm saying is that there are objects in your environment because it's got to look like a real place, right? So I'm sitting here going, and I have this eternal disconnect that if I'm in this place, I am going to grab a chair, I'm going to grab an IV cart, I'm going to grab whatever, and I'm going to want the big bad over his head to make a break for it. Actually, and that's one thing that just in games in general, uh, um, it doesn't have to be a gun. It just has to, to be, be something. That's one thing that in, in games in general, uh, I, you've gone through a couple of horror games up here and there are are uh, not uh, two or three of them uh, since I've known you. Well, there was until about, dawn that, that we which, did. which by the way we did as a party game. Which, which is by the way, just to address the audience real quick, yeah. play until dawn as a party game. You have your game master, which this happened to be Matt, and then you have a group of people, and they all have to agree on what decision to make. Now, our game master was nice enough to definitely time some things properly to make sure that you know characters lived, but in those important moments. Play Until Dawn as a party game. It's fantastic. Getting back yes. into this. But the, also, so this is a good one, too, because Until Dawn, it's it's basically a horror movie in and of itself because it, it's uh, interactive. Well, and there were a few moments there that, I mean, you having known the game. Yeah. And, and, and I think but there were one, two, there was, co- like, four, there was yeah. like four of us in the room, yeah. five of us in the yeah. room. Like, there were moments where the four or five were just like, jeez! And, like, and, and, and you, as you're playing, because, again, you're the game master, and we're yeah. just watching you play, 
Like even the, there were four of us or five of us that were just like, okay, this is this is a pretty intense. But it also ha- it has a flow to it. It's yeah. a good horror movie. Yes, and it's essentially a movie at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's just quick time events. And it's um so that is done very very well. That is also weaponless, but it's a very different genre. It's an interactive movie. It's a point and click adventure for yeah. lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but the only game I've seen that's really done that defenselessness right is Alien Isolation. And that is obviously based on the Alien franchise. Mm-hmm. And the um, the aliens have always been kind of cannon fodder in video games. Um, and they're only dangerous in numbers. Well, this goes back to that original 79 flick where you're on a... Uh, in this case, it's a station, but then it was a ship. Small ship. Right. Where you're trapped with no way of actually having a possibility of killing this thing. This thing is eight feet tall, armored, bleeds acid. Don't get close. Two mouths. Uh-huh. Um, it's, uh, no, it is a horrifying monster and James Cameron's aliens decided to, uh, it's kind of a non parallel, but, um, you know, these things are still dangerous. And this is something that people miss the point of aliens is that they didn't get away. Most of the Marines died. So these things are lethal. And so you're trapped on this station with one and you can't kill it. You can shoot it, but it doesn't do much. And so your main tactics are to avoid it, but about a third to halfway-ish through the game, you get a flamethrower. And what the flamethrower do is it drives it off. So it gives you that, you know... And the so it's not even a, a, really a weapon. To, it's a deterrent, not, uh, not a weapon. But it gives you that agency back. Now you can make decisions again. Um, Resident Evil 2 Remake did the same thing with Mr. X. Just because you can't kill him doesn't mean you can't slow him down. And also, they know how to pace it. The alien. Okay, so so what you're saying is is in in it's, in, it's in the game world in the game world, what makes a game truly terrifying, truly horrifying, is the 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 hope. If yeah. you have no hope in a game, then the, why should the, I then be there's scared? There's no horror. And far too actually, often, no. I like that. Yeah, but and that's and all, far too that's often. All about, you're, far too often, you're sitting there going, "Dumbass, put down the camera and grab something, please." Yeah. I can like, see that. You know, there's a midway point through Outlast. You have a character that chases you with these big ass surgical shears or garden right, so, shears. So I'm gonna. I, I got I, I got something. Yeah, for it. And uh, this was something that I'm going with. And the, you you were on the phone with me when I, I, I anyway finished my thought is I'm sitting there going no I'm gonna do that stealth thing and then the second he turns his back I'm running up behind him I'm tackling him I'm going for those shears if I die doing it at least we tried. You know, <laughs> the one thing that I will say this and it's not a horror game but it was a, and you were on the phone with me when it happened. Was in un in Uncharted. Oh, when the uh, yeah yeah. And spoiler you're, you're warning the, for Drake's yeah, fortune. The, this yeah, this is uh, yeah. Spoiler warning for Uncharted if you guys have not played the Uncharted games. But uh, yeah. where you're in the ship, what the hell did they call those things? I'm just gonna call them zombies. I don't know. What they, I, I don't remember what they were called. They were the infected. Yeah, they were um, from El Dorado. And yeah, so I think they actually just called them zombies. <laughs> but I'll never get your your you're going through the, and and it's. And the atmosphere was horrifying. Well, when you're in the bunker and you and you're and you've got to go through the ship and you're going through and I'm not good at video games. I'm not. I I and I but I'm playing Drake's Fortune, and I had no idea that there was any supernatural element to right. the Uncharted games. I had no idea, and all of a sudden. I'm in this area and I'm playing the video game very loud because yeah. I believe music needs to be listened to loud, movies need to be watched loud, and uh, and video games need to be played loud. Why? Because guess what? If you've ever done any audio, any any sort of Gives audio the work, chance, the space. Well, no, but if you've yeah. ever done any audio work ever, you listen to it loud yeah. so you can hear all of the tiny bits. Yeah. So just as a just as a thing, and it, my hearing is also probably shot, so that's probably yeah. why I listen to stuff loud. But I'm playing this game, and all of a sudden, rawr, and I'm like, what the hell? And Matt was on the phone with me because I was calling him. I was like, yeah, hey, you know, it's a pretty good game because he was calling me to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I think he'd call me, hey, how far have you made it? I'm like, oh, you know. And he's on the phone with me. So I was like, oh, my God, what is that? And I dropped my phone off my shoulder. I, I literally remember dropped this. the I controller. This. And I'm like, oh, you. And, I'm, and I was like, what the hell? And I'm literally, he's listening to me on the phone. Like, holy crap. And I'm like, I'm half dropping the controller. I'm terrified. I'm shooting the things. They're not dying. Yeah. Because I think I had a, I, the, 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 uh, the, mm, wasn't the Mauser. It was like the P44. Uh, oh, yeah. I, it was the pistol in the game. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm the losing my, and I'm, yeah. and I'm terrified. And I, I just want to get to a safe spot. Well, turns out you don't get to a safe spot for about 
least the way that I played the games, it was like <laughs> 20 or 30 minutes. It might, might have been a little more than that the first time through. But but that moment where it's unexpected, mm -hmm. you have the ability to kill the thing that's after you, but you can't do it easily. Yeah. And not only that, but you have outs that you have to go through. And not only that, but you, a person I, who doesn't know the game, yeah. I didn't know the tunnels. And they were easy tunnels. Exactly. They weren't great. But, but all of a sudden, get you're turned scared. around. And, you get turned around. They're behind you. You're trying to get through this thing. But here's my and point. And it's terrifying. But here's my point is that's done well because you can fight back. You're not just sitting in a death loop going, okay, I missed a tunnel somewhere. Where is it? Yeah. And at that point, you're just both. I remember an outlast. Cool. I just bull rush. So not only that, the so big bad and just trying the, the sounds, the sounds, the atmosphere, the setup. Even still playing through it because I've gone through. And it that again. was the beauty of isolation too: is that the alien is not the only threat. You have desperate survivors mm -hmm. who will shoot at you, and you have the uh, knockoff androids that you know the, an alien. The androids look human; these don't, mm -hmm. and they're very creepy. But you can kill those. It uses well, ammo, what was and that, it makes what's that game I always talk about. It and it the, makes uh, noise, so every time you engage in combat, it could draw in the alien. And so you have this cat and mouse, but you can also drive the alien <laughs> off, and that gives you that tension. One of, the, one of these days, we got to go through this game that I remember, and it was terrifying when I was a kid. Was it was a Legacy of Kane. Oh, yeah, I've heard good things about that. Yeah, we'll have to go through that, because I remember that yeah. game, from, and I, I'll never forget that was one of the first games that actually scared me as a kid, so we'll there have to go through that. But no, so I think ultimately the idea here is that uh, weaponless horror games, they don't give you the idea of fighting back, and so it because ruins... you can't fight back, there's really no hope there. There's no horror there, because... You just kind of let the game do to you what you will, and then just restart. Yep, and more than once I go, I miss something. I stop dead, let the thing kill me, start from checkpoint. Yep. So thank you so much for watching this. I'm going crazy stick around to the end of the video to find out what uh, you can do to help support the channel. And don't forget to go down in the comments below and let us know uh, what weaponless horror game uh, you either love or hate the most. Uh, take your take your pick, and don't we like reading, so... If it's going to be long, make it long. We'll read it. it. We'll, we'll comment back to you guys. Thank you so much for watching A Dream with Crazy. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video. We hope you enjoyed the discussion as much as we did. I know we've been having these for a long time just between the two of us. If you did enjoy this content and you want to see more like it, please share this with all your friends, and we'd love to hear your own opinions down in the comments. Agree, disagree. We want to hear it either way. If you do want to support this channel and we'd greatly appreciate it, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification for every time we go live. Hope to see you guys next time on A Drink With Crazy. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.